Well, this segment takes us out to Holcomb Valley, and there's a lot of snow here, probably uh, six, eight inches of snow. And, of course, uh, being high up and a lot of sunshine, uh, a lot of snow is already melted. But we're out here because the Discovery Center has a program called snowshoeing. And these are the snowshoes. Remember the old snowshoes that look like tennis rackets? Well, these are the modern ones. So are they pretty easy to get around? Are they nice? I hope so. Oh, good. Where are you all from? Uh, Marina Del Rey, Los Angeles. Oh, good. Are you up here for the three days? Uh, just for the one day. Actually. Just for the yeah, one day. Yeah, we're here this just for this snowshoe. trip. Well, very good. Glad to have you up. You enjoyed it? Yes, yeah. definitely. Good. Spotless. Yeah, these are pretty cool. I have no idea. So, Doug, just real quick on the snowshoes, uh, these are every week, they, uh, as long as there's snow, right. the Discovery Center is sponsoring these snowshoe tours. Yes, from 10 to 1 from the Discovery Center, and they provide these snowshoes um, as part of the $30 fee for the outing. Right. That's 30 for adults and 20 for children. Right. And then goes transportation, clear up here to Holcomb Valley right. and back. And exactly. Oh, what a deal. It is a great deal. And uh, we've had a great response. And fortunately, we haven't always had great snow like we do today. This is just wonderful. Yeah. Perfect snowshoeing. That's perfect. The weather is and beautiful. The weather is fabulous. Continue these outings, these snowshoe outings, until... Um, the snow's not any good anymore. Right. And then we'll wait for the uh, the spring wildflower bloom. Oh, that's and then right. We, the Discovery Center will offer tours on Saturday morning uh -huh. to go out and see the wildflowers. Sure. And uh, then when the wildflowers go away, then we transition to yet another seasonal program where we do. Um, mining tours, right. which features modern day mining, which is limestone mining, and we talk about the gold rush history here in Holcomb Valley. Yeah. So they get a little, but basically it's mining past and present. Um, we'll see you back down there. If you anyway, oh, a lot of people don't know that we have that mining just really has we have a history of mining here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, we really hope and Valley. Well, it was the, much. the tail end of our California gold rush, which began in 1848 with uh -huh. James Wilson Marshall's discovery of gold in the mill race of the sawmill he was building for John Sutter. Oh, yeah. South Fork of the American River. That it took a while for the news to get around, and so but that touched off the gold rush of 1849. Sure. Most of it was up north. It it didn't arrive here to Bear Valley until considerably later. It actually was 1855 uh -huh. when the first prospectors entered these mountains looking for gold. They actually found it on a seasonal creek up from where the Arco station is now. Oh, and if sure. you notice the sign. The street sign says Starvation Flats Road on the south side of the boulevard, uh -huh. there, that intersection. Well, that's a holdover from the gold rush days. Uh -huh. um, there's no evidence that anybody starved to death, but we know those miners were pretty hungry, and they jokingly named their camp Starvation Flats, and the creek became Starvation Creek. Eventually, they did have to go down the mountain to buy supplies, and as they did, other people found out about their discovery. Pretty much on a small scale. Uh -huh. um, uh, do you need to, as they, as they uh, just learned about the discovery, some of these prospectors, uh, maybe over the next five years, um, there may have been three or four dozen prospectors sure. in that area. Uh, in May, late. Um, 1884, excuse me, that's not right. In late 1895, Billy Holcomb and his partner came into the valley, and that set the stage for, for the gold rush here. He and his partner had come out from the Midwest as young men to get their uh, 
make their fortune in our gold rush. Mm -hmm. Well, they tried in the central Sierra Nevada unsuccessfully, several mining camps, and they were pretty discouraged. They were about ready to go home. They were back in Los Angeles talking about going home when all of a sudden somebody came down to buy supplies uh, from Big Bear and they found, it, found out about the discovery up here. Quickly had a powwow, decided to try once more before they packed it in. And so they got on their horses, headed east, and by this time, because of the previous expedition in 1845, the very first non-native people into these mountains, led by Benjamin Davis Wilson, people did know where Bear Valley was. And it was Wilson who named this Bear Valley because of the huge number of grizzly bears sure. in the meadow where the lake is now, because uh -huh. the lake wasn't there then. So anyway, the uh, people did know where Bear Valley was, a few people anyway. Enough, they g were able to guide uh, Billy and and Jack, and they eventually got to uh, starvation camp and joined the fun. After weeks of eating beans, one day Billy got tired of it and he took his rifle, came across the meadow and over the ridge that we came over to get here, became the first white man to set eyes on a new valley. Of course, the Serrano Indians had known about it for 3,000 years. Sure. Um, he shot and wounded a grizzly bear, was tracking it, and in the process, he found some gold. There are two versions. He changed his version uh, over the years, but one was a ledge of quartz full of gold. The other was a stream with huge gold nuggets. But anyway, he found gold, quickly forgot about the bear for the moment, went back and told his buddies at Starvation Creek, and they quickly gathered up their stuff, moved over here, staked out claims for themselves, and almost immediately began doing better than they had before. Um, now it made sense to protect their claims, whereas before it wasn't worth a long trek down the mountain to file a claim. But now it seemed to be prudent. So as they did file claims uh, down in Los Angeles, the newspapers picked up on this and quickly sped, spread the news far and wide and touched off the largest gold rush in Southern California history. Wow. So Billy shot that bear in May 1860. By the middle of that summer, there were close to 1,500 people in what was now being called Holcomb's Valley. About half of them were legitimate miners, according to mining claim records. The other half were gamblers and whiskey dealers and recreational ladies. And of course, they're the ones that made all the money. <laughs> sure. So that was how the gold rush in Bear Valley and Holcomb Valley began. Isn't that something? 1855 yeah. was the start of it. The real gold rush didn't start till 18. And there's still some gold around oh, here. Yes, there's gold. And it's in that ridge. Well, you can't see it, but uh -huh. the extension of that mountain over there, there's a rocky ridge, which is the source of the gold. Uh -huh. And uh, it still produces gold. They never found the main vein, but we know it's there because every spring, with the snow uh, melt and the freezing and thawing, it releases more gold and it's carried down as the water. Mm -hmm. uh, the snow melts, it carries it down into the Holcomb Valley. Uh, yeah, right. So people still come out here. It's considered recreational or hobby mining nowadays. Uh -huh. um, but this whole valley is still under mining claim. Really? Yeah. And people take it very seriously. Some of them do get really uptight when people go on their claims. But it's, it's basically hobby mining. There are no large-scale mining operations anymore, although there were many back in the late 1800s. Right huge stamp mills. It was incredible getting some of the equipment in here. They had to, there weren't any roads here. They had to actually in 1861, they built the first road from Holcomb Valley down to Hesperia. The road's still there. You can still drive it. And it met up with another road that a pioneer settler from San Bernardino, a Mormon settler named John Brown, was building to get around some of the, the nasty stretches in Cajon Pass. He built a toll road. And those two roads, built in 1861, met in what is now Hesperia. And uh, so by the summer of 1862, you could actually drive a wagon from San Bernardino to Holcomb Valley. Wow. And that was a big what deal. What history we have up here. It's fabulous. I know it. It, it really is. It's just, and there's some wonderful books that have been written. Tom Kors written books. Uh, Paulina Lafouse, excellent book. John Robinson. 
some really wonderful books on the history here. So uh, it's, it's been my pleasure to, to help people uh, learn about these, these facts and these places since uh, I started Big Bear Off-Road Adventures in 1999. We've been operating tours here in these mountains ever right. since. And it's been wonderful for me. I know. Really great. You have all kinds of tours. Give them your phone number. Let's give Off Road, Big Bear Off Road Adventures a plug here. Big Bear Off Road Adventures is 909 585 1036. We do have a website. It's triple W dot and then everything after the dot is lowercase and run together. And it's offroadadventure.com. It's singular because I believe it's Land Rover owns the plural to me. Oh, they, they, they had it sure. Offroadadventure.com. So off and we do have a, a TV show, Big Big Bear Offroad, Offroad Big Bear, actually, right. uh, on Channel 6. And we yeah. talk about stuff like this on that show, too. And, and, uh, and one of the things you have is a big band called Bigfoot. Yes. Bigfoot's a wonderful vehicle. And we also use Pinsgowers, like. Right. I'm going to talk to Henry in a minute. He lives up here. And he's got a, what would they call a two axle Pinsgower, right, Henry? Yes, hello. This is a two axle Pinsgower. Um, and we uh, specialize in uh, search and rescue for the off road. Uh -huh. Get stuck. We'll come you even get, get Hummers stuck, of all yes, things. Yes, we even uh, get Hummers unstuck or repair them. We have compressors and welders uh -huh. and everything inside the trucks. And um, we're with JK Recovery and also contracted with Big Bear Off Road Adventures. Sure. And uh, you can reach us at 909-693-8957. Say it again. Okay, it's 909-693-8957. Right. Or 909-647-5755. Good. Those are cell phones. Those are cell phones. Right. You can reach us um, day or night. Yeah, that's great. These Pinsgauers are uh, made in Germany for the Swedish Army. Yes, that's correct. They are 19. They were made in 1973 uh -huh. for the Swedish Army. Right. And they're being imported over here like mad. Yes. Does the Swedish Army use them anymore? I wonder. No, uh, they have different vehicles I now. I see. But um, they are very common up here now. I know it. And they are the ultimate off-road vehicle. Oh, I know it. They, they, these, uh, they're like mountain goats. They yes. just go everywhere. Yes, they do. I know it. And if it can't go, we have a winch that we could pull it up. Yeah, I know <laughs> it. That's great. Hendry, thanks so much. You live up here? And, yes, uh, I live in Big Bear. Yeah, so that's cool. And uh, this is your Pinsgauer. Yes. That's really, really great. It's great. They're a little hard riding, but it gets you there. Right. It is a little stiff. Right. But it is made for off-road. Right. This way, that's why the suspension is so stiff. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Henry. Okay. Thank you. So, Doug, what do you think? Well, I think that it's been great uh, to have uh, these fellows, John Soldate, with his vehicles. We contract with him, as Henry said, to, to provide uh, extra coverage for the vehicle recovery. We've already done a number of recoveries this winter. Sure. Uh, we also, <laughs> surprisingly, we do some in the summer too. People do get themselves stuck. Yeah. So it's great. These vehicles are well set up. They've got all kinds of equipment, welding equipment. They can actually do uh, repairs, which would normally make it impossible. They're broke down to where they couldn't couldn't move, and they can do repairs and allow them to uh, get out and sometimes under their own power sure that's so great. it's a it's been a great thing they've got just a wonderful setup here yeah. to do that kind of thing so anyway we're we're glad to have them as part of the fleet well that's good well doug you're always busy always busy and it's beautiful out here look at this snow folks holcomb valley in the winter it's really great Yes, it is. So anyway, once again, I'd like to remind you, if you want uh, some great tours right now, Discovery Center is offering eagle tours as well as snowshoe, snowshoe tours. And yesterday, you saw five eagles. Right. 
We saw George and Gracie, they were in their favorite perch tree together at one time for a while, and then one flew away. We weren't sure which one. Yeah. Um, and then we saw two immature juvenile eagles out there by uh, Treasure Island, Garston Island, mm -hmm. on the ice, and then another juvenile over at Grout Bay. Wow. So it was, a, it was the best Good. eagle tour that we've had so far. That's because that you had your eagle socks on. I did. I had my left uh -oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, thanks, thank, Don. Yeah, thanks, Doug. Thanks, Henry. Thank you. And, thanks for uh, watching your local Big Bear station. Okay, thanks. Well, that concludes the segment out here in beautiful Holcomb Valley. How serene it is now. So anyway, that's it. Now stay tuned for a word from my sponsors.